Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to see the types of games when it comes to game theory. Let's see what are the types of games when it when it is about the game theory aspect. Let's see. Moving on to the types of games, it is also important to see what is a game theory and what are the technical terms associated with the very same thing. Moving to the introduction, game theory is something that has been introduced by two people, John Van Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern. These two people are behind the formulation and development of game theory. And this was being done in the 1950s. It was during 1950s that these two people formulated and developed the concept of game theory. Now, what we can see in a game theory or what is a game theory? If somebody asks you, you can say that this is actually a situation. And in this situation, you will be having some players and these players will be using some strategies. And as a result of this, there would be some outcomes and payoff. So we will see each of these in detail. And uh, for this, we can take a game of chess. A game of chess. Okay. So this is the given situation. This is what we consider as a situation. Now, you know that a game of chess is played by two players who will be sitting on both sides of the chessboard and they make the player's part. They make the player's part. Situation is game and players mean the two players who will be playing the game. Now what does strategy mean? Statute, strategy means the players that we have in a game of chess, they will be taking some moves on the chessboard, isn't it? So these are strategies. This can be moves or decision taken by the players. Now, what can be the outcome? Outcome could be a player would be winning and another the other player would be losing. Isn't it? So this is known as the outcome, win or loss. This is the outcome. And whenever the outcome comes, this is, it is something that you have to consider along with the outcome that is payoff. What is payoff? If somebody win the game, that person will be getting a reward. If somebody lose the game, that means he will be losing it so he might be incurring some expenses uh, so as to play the game so he will be facing a loss there isn't it he is not getting anything in return but the person who wins is getting a reward and that is what you can know as payoff so we have seen the technical terms associated with the game theory having said that let's see the different types of games the types of game could be classified into different categories based on several criteria. Upon, uh, based on one criteria, you can classify games into cooperative games and non-cooperative games. So this is a way of classification where you can have cooperative game and the other classification is non-cooperative game. Now we are going to see what is a cooperative game and what is a non-cooperative game. When it comes to cooperative game, as its name suggests, the players would be cooperating. The players would be cooperating with each other. And as a result, they would be adopting a particular strategy. They will go for a particular decision or a particular move. And how they take this? This is based on the negotiations, the kind of discussions, the kind of agreements that would be agreed upon between the players that we have in the game. 
if you take the case of prisoner's dilemma you know that uh, this is a situation where you will be having two suspects and the police will be catching the two suspects and these these two people would be put in two separate rooms and the police goes for interrogation and there would be different possibilities for the game and here you could see that the two players who would be playing the game that is the two suspects who are put in different or separate rooms they don't have any possibility to negotiate because they don't have any possibility to contact so the cooperative game should be something that can happen only when the the players that we have in the game they have a contact with each other and they go for what is known as negotiation so when it comes to the prisoner's dilemma we are not having a negotiation so it is not a cooperative game moving on to the non cooperative game here players would be considering the other player every player would be considering the other player as as his enemy or something here what happens is that every player will be trying to maximize his own strategy his own payoff so they will be taking every player would be taking his or her own strategy in such a way that this will be maximizing their profit and this is what you can see in the case of prisoner's dilemma in the prisoner's dilemma every suspect was trying to maximize his profit he he is trying to minimize his years of imprisonment isn't it so the player every player in the prisoner's dilemma game was trying to decide to go for a strategy that would be maximizing his or her payoff so prisoner's dilemma is a perfect example of non cooperative game next the next way of classifying games make you two types of game which is simultaneous game and sequential game when it comes to simultaneous game what happens is that the players who would be playing the game let let's assume that th there are two players who would be playing a game so both of these players would be playing the game simultaneously the kind of strategy the kind of move that they take would be made in simultaneous fashion so one player don't know about the knowledge uh, about the movement of the other player the one player that we have in a game let's suppose that the two players are a and b so when both a and b will be moving together when it come when it is a simultaneous game and a won't be able to know the movement of b and b won't be able to know the movement of a that is what you call a simultaneous game having said that let's consider the sequential game sequential game is a situation when the players will be aware about the move of the player who has already adopted a particular strategy so let's consider that there are two players player a and player b so player a have two strategies strategy 1 and strategy 2 so whenever player a take any of these strategies player b2 will be having possibilities here also player b can go for strategy 1 and strategy 2 you are also player b can go for strategy 1 and strategy 2 so old, the player b will be taking its move only after the move taken by player a the first move is taken by player a here and it is based on the strategy adopted by player a player b will decide whether it should go for strategy 1 or strategy 2 okay so if player a chooses strategy 1 player b will then decide okay anyway player a has chosen strategy 1 so then i can decide upon strategy 1 and strategy 2 again if player a chooses strategy 2 player b will think okay player a has already taken strategy 2 
Now it is my turn to decide whether I should take strategy one or strategy two. So this is something that gives you a sequential game is something that gives you a decision tree, and that is what you are seeing it here. This is called a decision tree. Okay. Now the next type of game is zero sum game and non zero sum game. When it comes to zero sum game, what happens is that if two players are playing a game. and one player wins and the other player loses what we consider is that the gain of one player is exactly equal to the loss of the other player one player's gain will be exactly equal to the other player's loss loss This is something that you can have in a play of chess, in a game of chess, or gambling things like that. Now moving on to the zero non-zero sum game. Here the outcome of all players is not zero. That means this is a situation where gain of one player will not be equal to loss of the other player okay so this is a case with non zero sum game and this is usually you can see that somewhere in cooperative games you have a non zero sum aspect coming why because whenever you go for a cooperation whenever player 1 and player 2 cooperate whether it is a win it means both both will win both will win whatever if it is a loss if it is a loss both will lose both will be having loss loss okay so either every player would be winning or every player would be losing that is what happens in a cooperative game which can be an example of non zero sum game as well now that is all about today you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos also you can be a part of my telegram community for that you can take the link from the description box also you can download the learn economy app i'll be providing the link of that as well in the description box so you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you for watching